Well, the housing market has been ultra strong, and along with that, so has the demand for home improvement products. Floor and Decor is at the center of this trend, and joining me now with more is Floor and Decor CEO Tom Taylor. Thanks so much for joining me today, Tom. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So Floor Decor in early August reported a solid quarterly report and now has quite a few quarters in a row of estimate beating results. And with the company expanding its offerings, we'll, we'll kind of dig in later into all of the factors that uh, the company is dealing with right now. But what product categories would you say drove the company's success in the quarter? We, we had strength really across all the categories. Now we're up against, uh, you know, a quarter last year where the store was shut down to the general public. We were just doing online orders for most of the quarter of last year. So the comparisons were, were, were different, um, but all the categories showed great strength. I'd say what I'm most excited about is, is really what's going on with our better and best products. And I don't know if you've been in a floor and decor, but we have just really uh, amazing products that our, our, our folks have found. And it's across really every department, whether it's a a wide width wood, or it's a 24 by 48 tile, uh, or a fancy marble in the deco department. Our merchants have just done a really good job of going out and getting new products and uh, new newness and, and trend forward is really what's driving our sales. And vinyl flooring also is a trend right now. Could you speak to what you're seeing yeah. in that category? Yeah, it, vinyl's been strong for a while. And I think it's the innovations that happened over a few years ago with durability and water resistance that are really driving consumers in to make the change. And, you know, we're introducing new stuff in our vinyl line all the time. It continues to be one of our strongest categories quarter in and quarter out. And, you know, customers are stepping up to that durability and they're stepping up to uh, you know, better and best products within that category too. We brought in some wider widths, some longer lengths uh, in vinyl, uh, something that people wouldn't generally see and consumers are really excited about it. And also as a backdrop here, you have the price of lumber. That's, that's a factor maybe when it comes down to the project level, but how is that added to the mix of what is going on with, with floor and decor and how are you adjusting perhaps for that uh, higher input cost? Sure. So yeah, wood, wood, you know, wood commodity wood pricing uh, has affected our wood floor category. Um, that's been going on for a while. We're fortunate across all of our merchants like we we have a very long tenured merchandising group we very rarely change merchants over categories we've got the same gentleman buying tile that's been buying it for 15 years for our company and they have good relationships with our suppliers we buy from 250 suppliers out of 20 countries so we've got a broad based supply base and when we get cost increase which we do and we we're seeing now we you know, we negotiate to the best that we can. And if we have to, we pass them along to the consumer. So we're starting to see an increase in that. And I think our merchants are doing a good job of, of negating it to the best of their abilities. Now, another factor at play here is supply chain. I think we've seen issues with that. So what is the strategy there to counterbalance some of the challenges that you may see on the supply chain front? Yes, lots of challenges on the supply chain front. I'll just give you a few things that we've been working on. First is diversifying our countries of origin. Uh, three years ago, almost 50% of what we sold came out of China. And today that number's down less than 30% on its way, closer to 20%. So by moving things around the country, it's made it a little bit better. Uh, we've increased the number of carriers we use. We used to have, you know, we have a dedicated fleet of carriers, but we've had to increase that. We're routing through alternative ports. Uh, we're not just going to the ports where our DCs are. Anywhere we can get freight into the country, we're trying to do it. Uh, we're actually pulling forward shipments now. We decided to pull in Chinese New Year's shipment earlier in anticipation of supply chain challenges to make sure that we have enough inventory to, to satisfy the demand increases. So we, we've got you know lots of moving parts, lots of things that we're trying to do uh, to get product flowing into the store. And I think because our stores are, uh, if you've been in our stores, they're 80,000 square foot stores with 3,500 SKUs. When we're struggling within the supply chain to get products into the stores, we've got enough alternatives that customers can make another choice and it seems to be working well for us. And speaking of the stores, it's one of the company's strategic initiatives is new store growth. So can you detail the progress of that and uh, what you're looking to do there? Yeah, it's been terrific. So we've been opening 20% unit new unit growth uh, since 2012. Uh, and last year we had to take a pause, right? We only were able to open up about 13% new stores and it was really because of COVID-19 We and we had to be cautious. So we slowed our growth last year. That's picked back up 20% this year and we'll continue to grow at 20% new units for the foreseeable future. Uh, stores are terrific. Um, the class of 
uh, this class and the last class of stores are, are aiming to be some of our best classes that we've had during my tenure here. So this, the stores being accepted across the country. Uh, our, our focus is really to grow 50% of our new stores in existing markets and try to do 50% outside of the market. It's not always possible because we're getting bigger, but, uh, but that's a huge part of what we do and a huge part of how we're growing. And along with the new stores, you're also maybe reorganizing the footprint as you're highlighting or expanding to different product areas? Yeah, so we always, you know, our next new store will be our best new store. We're, we're always, we're a company that's never satisfied and there really is no finish line when it comes to the store. So the stores are always changing a little bit and depending on where it opens in the com uh, country, it depends on how much space a given category will get. But I think one of the ways the store has changed a lot over the last year is we brought in, uh, made a heavy emphasis towards, uh, I would say two things, one towards adjacent categories. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, we really only had hard surface floor and now we've done a good job of adding things like vanities, bath hardware, shower doors, things that a, a, a customer needs to finish the project. I mean, we don't wanna, we have no aspiration to be a Home Depot or a Lowe's, but we do know that there's certain categories that a customer doesn't wanna have to drive someplace else and get and it's working well. So that's that's changed multiple aisles in the store because we have to fit it. Um, and it it's uh, that's one of the most exciting things we're doing. The second is just, I, I mentioned, you can see the backdrop behind me just the way we display our product in the stores, but the evolution of, of large format product is really uh, across the country is very exciting for us. And, and our merchants, uh, we do a thing called a product line review across every category we sell uh, a couple times a year. And what that allows us to do is bring in products like you see behind me, bigger, better, cool, you know, cooler stuff, more fashion forward. Uh, and that's, so the store feels different from where I did a few years ago, just because of the evolution of the product as well. And design services, it's another area you're hoping to make inroads and the commercial or professional business. What are the aspirations with that? Yeah, so I'll start with design and then I'll talk about our pro business a little bit. So from a merchandising standpoint, we've been pretty good at the design centers in our stores. We have 2,500 to 3,000 square foot design centers where we have vignettes of uh, different rooms that you would see in your house, but different vignettes that are staffed by designers to help you when you come in the store. And from a merchandising perspective, we've been good for a while. I would say for the last five years, our design centers have been terrific. From an operating standpoint and making sure that the customer experience within every floor and decor is the same, we're in the early innings uh, of how good we can be. We've got designers in every store. Uh, we're working on how do we get the best designers? How do we you know, keep the best designers? How do we keep them staying with us? Um, how do we give the designers tools that they can help customers? But better and it's working well uh but when a customer uses our designer experience they they score us terrific on our google ratings are above four percent and the customer reaction is great so i think what we're, we're still got work to do we're just starting to pilot in-home design where we'll come out to your house and, and help you with your flooring project and we're just starting that in a couple of markets uh and we're excited about potential what that can bring on the pro side of the business you know we know we sell a category where only 15% of someone who buys from us actually does it themselves. It's usually a professional or someone the professional is working with. So we've always thought of ourselves like a supply house and try to treat customers like they're in a supply house. There are pros at the shop in the stores, the bucket and trial pros, they are very busy. Their, their pipeline is robust uh, from everything they tell us and everything we hear from our stores. So uh, the outlook is good. Um, from a commercial, I think, you know, we did an acquisition of Spartan, uh, our first acquisition in our company's uh, history. And we think that there's a big opportunity to get more serious in the commercial side of the business, uh, you know, places where they would use a specifier to spec their business. We think we bought one of the best and will help us grow that business pretty significantly over the next few years. And you mentioned Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, so what would you say gives Floor & Decor its competitive edge in the marketplace when you're competing against those big boxes yeah. and, the, and the mom and pops out there? For sure. Uh, we have a lot of respect for the, both those companies and the independents. Um, they're terrific retailers, but we dedicate our average store is 80,000 square feet. So we dedicate 80,000 square feet to what they dedicate an aisle to an aisle and a half to two aisles. We have the broadest in stock assortment of really anyone we compete with. So if you looked at tile inside of a floor and decor ready to go home today would be 250 options in tile. Or a home improvement center, they just can't fit that much. If they could fit 55, it would be a lot. It's just, it's harder for them 
uh, to be able to assort and then to be able to carry the amount of inventory in the store the way that we do. So um, I, I, I think that's the that's one part of the advantage. The other part is just the way we, because of those big stores, and you can look behind me and see the way we present the product is very inspirational. We have the ability to, we have big design centers where you go in and you can see what a kitchen would look like and a bathroom would look like. And then the displays of our product, because of the size of our stores, we're able to just do it in a real significant way. So when you come in and you've never put flooring down, you're going to be able to see the product almost like it's going to look in your house versus looking at a small little display of it. And we think that's a big advantage as well. And you mentioned Spartan. So does the company have plans for other acquisitions to help fuel growth of moving down the line as you look to expand? Yeah, I mean, Spartan was uh, our first acquisition. Uh, our goal is to learn as much as we can. You know, we want to, we're, we're, now we've met the whole entire team. We're excited about that team. We're excited about what they can do. They've got nice growth plans. We're going to help them achieve those growth plans. And I would say, we're not looking at another acquisition today, but our eyes and ears are open, right? So that's something that could come over time. But uh, for now, it's to learn as much as we can. It's only been, we just closed on the acquisition a little over a month ago. So we need to you know, continue to monitor it and, and we'll be cautious in what we do. But certainly it's an exciting space to be in. All right. Well, Tom, thank you so much for your time today. Congratulations on all the success at Florin Decor. It's a story that we're going to continue watching. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And make sure you check out investors.com for more news on all the top growth stocks you need to know. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.